Hello everybody, today I'm going to be making sulfuric acid from Epsom salt. I will also be making some magnesium hydroxide as a byproduct, but let's get started. So, I have my Epsom salt here, I got this at the hardware store, and I'm going to be adding some pretty arbitrary amount into some water. should be good enough. Stir that in. So I've done a couple of runs with this before and I have my solution from those right here. So this will take a little longer if you're starting from scratch. But the gist of what's going on here is this pot will go inside our container with our Epsom salt and we'll separate the two solutions. The pot is still able to be crossed through by ions, but not the solutions themselves. So what this leaves us with is our Epsom salt solution with our copper electrode and our acid solution with our positive electrode. So I'm using a platinum electrode for this. You don't have to use platinum, you could use carbon, that works as well. Although I don't like filtering out all the little carbon bits, so I'm using my platinum electrode. Uh, for the negative electrode, you could use probably a bunch of different types of metals. I'm using copper because it's convenient. But, let's hook this up. There we go. So, what it's doing is it's making hydrogen and magnesium hydroxide on our negative electrode. And, no, you won't be able to see it. Oh, a little bit. Hydrogen and magnesium hydroxide on our negative electrode and oxygen gas on our positive. It's also making sulfuric acid and it's just pulling that into the water. So it's pulling the sulfate out of this solution, making sulfuric acid in here. And then the magnesium hydroxide is just getting deposited on our electrode. And if we let this run, it will just slowly build up a bunch of magnesium hydroxide here and leave us our sulfuric acid in there. So I'll just let this run and then I'll be back. It's been about 10 minutes and you can now see little bits of magnesium hydroxide on our negative electrode falling off. That's good. Also, I forgot apparently to say it, but um, if you're starting this just out the box, like you haven't had any runs done yet, instead of having your acid solution already in here, just put distilled water. It will take a little while for your electrolysis to start because it'll have to build up some acid in here to start conducting well. So it'll be really slow at first, but eventually it will go. So just wanted to clear that up and we're just gonna let it go. So I let it run through the night. <clears throat> now I have a sizable pile of magnesium hydroxide and what should be a pretty acidic solution right here. Yep, that's acid all right. Now just gotta shut it down and take it apart. Here's something pretty neat. I've noticed it a couple times and I don't exactly know why it does it, but 
my acid solution is purple. Yeah, if uh, anybody knows what's going on here, please say so in the comments because I have no clue. Uh, the purple color disappears after a day or two, but it's really pretty, but very weird. So here are my two products side by side. Got my pretty pink acid solution and a blue magnesium hydroxide. Uh, magnesium hydroxide is usually white. The reason this is blue is because I used a copper electrode. And so some of that copper probably turned into copper hydroxide and that's what's coloring it blue. So it's a little contaminated with copper. It shouldn't be that bad though for anything else. And here's the acid solution. I have a little bit more from a couple other runs I've done. So I'm probably gonna combine all this and boil it down in some concentrated sulfuric acid. Yeah. So we're probably gonna do that. I'm gonna pause the video here for a second because what I am did is I boiled it down, but I boiled it way too much. I ended up forgetting it on the hot plate and it completely boiled everything down. I was just left with some magnesium salts, I think. So my sulfuric acid was contaminated for one, and I believe I found my kryptonite now, boiling things down. I'm very, very good at forgetting about them. But I ended up losing that footage as well, so here's my second attempt at it. My lab's a pretty big mess at the moment, but here is a second run of some sulfuric acid that I did. There's some of the magnesium sulfate I need to, or magnesium hydroxide i need to mess fix with that but uh this is another acid run that i did i should be able to boil it down this time and i'm gonna make sure i'm near it so that it actually boils down and doesn't just burn off everything so we're gonna see i'm pretty sure we're gonna definitely see a lot of crystals coming out because a ton of magnesium sulfate got into it uh, i don't know how hard it'd be to make pure sulfuric acid with this method it probably wouldn't be super easy though so we're just gonna see all right so it is starting to get a little gummed up now that usually means that there is some crystals precipitating oh. out so i think i'm gonna take it off now let all the crystals crash out and then add it to this bit of sulfuric acid that i have Trying, trying to dry it out right now. I also removed some salts from that. But yeah, this is our product. We've made some sulfuric acid, albeit impure, from Epsom salt. And let me see if I can find a piece of paper. Let's see if it'll melt paper. All right, I have a piece of paper towel. And I'm gonna get some of my sulfuric acid. Okay, just a little bit. And we're gonna put it on the paper towel. Oh, yeah, that completely dissolved it. <laughs> Look at that go. Yeah, that's, that's definitely sulfuric acid. Burned right through the paper. So, that's been it. I have made some sulfuric acid. Now I just need to let all the crystals crystallize out and I'll be good.